because the way people talk is amazing. This is the one I would like to try and fit in the most, but I struggle to not sound like an idiot. <laughs> Gold smacked. <laughs> is that helpful? Glad I like acted that out for everyone. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Yvette and I moved to the UK in May and I'm just documenting my experiences. I wanted to make a video discussing all of my favourite British slang because the way people talk is amazing. I am fortunate enough to work in a team that is full of people from Birmingham, Leeds, Newcastle, Manchester, London obviously, um, and also Scotland even, all over the UK. So what that means is that when we have meetings, I get exposed to all the different expressions around the UK and different types of slang, and I love it. So this video is going over my favorite types of British slang and the ones I kind of want to somehow start using but not look like a complete tryhard. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Probably outlook not good, but we'll see what happens. So I'll get into it. These are my favorite British slangs that I found. All to pot. All to pot, if you're American. <laughs> so it would be like, oh, it's all gone to pot, you know? Um, so it's like, everything's gone wrong, my whole plan's failed, all to pot. Um, I hear that one a fair bit, it makes me laugh. I think it's cute, it reminds me of Mrs. Potts for some reason from Beauty and the Beast. And yeah, it's just a really endearing way to be like, it's all gone to shit, <laughs> you know? But it's a cute way of saying it. So I really like, all to pot. Um, my next one is blimey. I love blimey. This is the one I would like to try and fit in the most, but I struggle to not sound like an idiot. <laughs> like blimey. <laughs> like, oh no, blimey this and blimey that. I can't. I'm not explaining it well. But you know, everyone knows blimey. Like it's like a shock. But see, it doesn't sound natural when I say it because I'm like, blimey. <laughs> like, oh, blimey. This seems like I'm mocking someone. <laughs> I can't pull it off, <laughs> but I love it a lot. I wanted to put this one in just because you can't really have a British slang list without it, but bloody, um, like bloody good, what are you, the bloody hell, bloody, bloody hell is mostly the common one. Um, it is common in Australia as well, kind of like mate, I wasn't gonna put mate on this list either, but everyone kind of knows like bloody is like the cliche, like top of the morning to you type thing for the UK slang is like bloody. The one I'm most likely to be able to pull off because I've probably been saying it in Australia, so bloody. Bloody hell. Or that's bloody cool or bloody good. You know, bloody. Bollocks. I don't, see the weird thing is I don't know how intense these are in terms of like swears. So it could be like saying the equivalent of the C word, but I don't really know. So you can tell me below if I'm like completely offending everyone and probably should have bleeped it. But bollocks, um, it's like the dog's bollocks as I've also heard that expression, but it's like bad. It's like, oh bollocks, oh crap, oh no, that's bad. Well, that looks like bollocks. Um, you can also use it as like bollocking, as like telling someone off as like my wife gave me a bollocking last night, etc. Um, bollocks is also kind of up there with like bloody in terms of like the cliche words that the UK use. Bollocks. I think I could get away with that one, maybe. I think the number one word that is associated with the UK, at least for me, is brilliant. And I want to try and fit it in and I just don't know how to make it like flow off the tongue, you know? Like, oh, brilliant, that looks good. See, that's, I think I'm getting better. This is the one I've been working on the most because it's a bit more positive. <laughs> I don't want to be swearing at people, but oh, brilliant, oh, that's brilliant. Or like, it could also be sarcastically, if you like, miss my, miss my bus and you're like, oh, brilliant, you know? Brilliant. Also reminds me of Harry Potter a lot. I think he said it a lot, I don't know. I don't know why it just says Harry Potter to me. Bugger all, um, bugger, bugger all. Bugger I used to use as a kid, <laughs> believe it or not. I remember running up being like, bugger. <laughs> Imagine like a little three-year-old. <laughs> Um, but bugger all is like, how many points did you score? And they're like, ah, oh, bugger all, none, none at all. One of my other favorites is chuffed. So like feeling pretty good, so like oh, I'm chuffed about that, or I'm really chuffed that I hit my sales target, or I'm really chuffed that I didn't think I was gonna catch my bus. It's kind of like just a bit happy, you know? Like a little win. Like you wouldn't, well, unless you're being sarcastic, you wouldn't be like, oh, I'm pretty chuffed on my wedding day, like downplaying it because you're probably ecstatic, hopefully. Maybe it's a bad example. But chuffed, I like, I think I use that one a little bit, but I like it a lot. Um, I, next one is, is cock up. Uh, I put this one in because it was really funny because this is back when I was in Australia. I was in a team and I was working with a lady who was from Yorkshire and she was talking to a guy who was from the French, he was like French Caribbean and we were in Australia, very multicultural. 
she was talking and giving an example and she was like, oh, what if we just like cock up the whole presentation just casually? And he heard obviously the word, the first half of that and thought she was talking about something else because it didn't translate to like French. Because he obviously spoke English, but like getting the intricacies of like the slang like this is what he didn't get. And it was the most awkward, hilarious moment of the entire life. It was like everyone is just sitting there laughing. The poor Yorkshire woman went like bright red. She was like so embarrassed because she didn't mean anything rude, obviously. Cock up is just like mess up. Um, but he obviously just heard the phallic word and then he got awkward and was like, I don't think it would be that. <laughs> it was so great. If you're British and you've ever said that to an American, just watch their face because I bet they have the same reaction because they're very literal people. Um, I put do, like D-O, on on this list because um, it's come up a few times that when I'm talking to Americans, they don't know what I mean when I'm like, oh, it's just a nice little do and like a, a hen do, etc. Because we say hen do as well. Um, but do is essentially a party, like a little fancy do, you know, little, nothing major. Just a little, like it's just yeah, downplaying a party basically. Um, I think one of the more British ones is gobsmacked. So the gob is your mouth and smacked is, so it's like gobsmacked. <laughs> Is that helpful? Glad I like acted that out for everyone. Um, but yes, gob smacked is gob smacked is surprise. I don't think I can say it. it. Seems not. I don't think I've heard anyone my age say gob. Maybe they have. Maybe I'm not paying attention. I don't know. Doesn't that one's harder for me to fit in because it seems very unnatural. Because Australians like to shorten everything, and gob smacked is like long. I could just be like, whoa, you know. <laughs> Another one is gutted. Now this one seems like a younger person's one. Only because I watched The Circle and Hume had no idea what anyone was saying when they said they were gutted. So it's disappointed, devo, devastated, gutted. I'm so sad. Oh my god, I'm gutted. So that one definitely could. Hunky Dory, I put this in even though it's. I'm gonna, because this is my favourite British. I used to say this one always as a kid. I'd say I'm hunky dory. Which I have no idea where I got all these expressions from. Like I grew up in Australia. I don't know why I was running around saying like bloody and gobsmacked and blah, blah, blah. Like anyway, hunky dory is just like good, all good. It's all good, hunky dory. <laughs> and I love it. Jammy is one I learnt recently. So you're like, oh, you're so jammy. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Like, I know it's, I'm not silly enough to think they meant literal jam, but I was also not smart enough to know. So jammy is lucky, essentially, unless I'm wrong, feel free to correct me because I'm not 100% sure on this one. But it is, from what I understand, it's like lucky. So, oh, you're so lucky. So jammy would be um, when you just like have that row of luck that keeps going. So if you're meeting friends for a drink somewhere and they happen to get a car spot right out the front, you'd be like, oh my God, you're so jammy. Yes? No? Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> lost the plot. I often say this because I've often lost the plot. Um, it's just when you're... How do you say lost the plot? It's like one of those things. How do you explain it? It's like when you get so off track, you know? Um, some would say Brexit is lost the plot because it's just so off track of where it was meant to be or what it was supposed to be. It's just lost the plot. I think most people can agree politics in general has lost the plot. Um, but yeah, so just whenever you're not where you're supposed to be, because like if you think of the plot of a story, you've like lost it, you know, no idea where you're meant to be. Is that a really good explanation? Probably not. Uh, pork pies. Um, I thought I can't do a list of British slang without a little bit of rhyming cockney slang. Um, pork pies is telling lies, because you hear it sounds. Don't listen to him, he's telling lies. Don't listen to him, he's telling porky pies or pork pies. Um, just means you're lying, which <laughs> if you were talking to someone who is a bit more literal, I can understand why you'd be confused. But yeah, telling lies, pork pies. <laughs> I thought I'd put posh on here because I don't really hear Americans saying it. Um, and um, um, Australians don't say posh. We'd say like, we say yuppies in, in Australia, which is so weird. Anyway, um, posh is like posh spice. So it's like, someone who's from the upper class or something is just like needlessly flashy or expensive or fancy looking like I'm going to a posh restaurant it's like excessively nice um, or she's pretty posh if you're talking about someone or posh spice scrummy I love scrummy because they say it all the time on Bake Off um, it's like yummy basically that's scrummy I think it's from scrumptious maybe scrummy makes me feel like an old lady like a little old grandma being like scrummy <laughs> Maybe I'm just thinking Mary Berry, I don't know. 
Um, throwing a wobbly, I think I mentioned this one on a different video, but I just love it so much because I used to get told I was throwing a wobbly when I was a child. It's just when you chuck a tantrum, <laughs> you just had enough and you're just like, nothing can make you happy. I still chuck a wobbly to be honest. Who, look, it's healthy. Every now and then, chuck a wobbly. I put, I wanted to put Tosh on the list because it's like, because I didn't want to put rubbish or crap or anything like, you know, because I think rubbish is pretty straightforward, but um, Tosh, you might not know, um, is basically the same thing. Oh, that's a load of Tosh, or that's Tosh, whatever. It's rubbish, it's crap, it's Tosh. <laughs> that should be like a slogan. <laughs> I Getting to the end, two more. Second last one, um, I put mare, because I'm having a nightmare, but people will be like, I'm having a mare. It took me a long time to figure that one out. I was like, what are they talking about? I thought they were legitimately, I thought they were talking about horses for a long time. They're not, <laughs> like a mare. Like a male horse or is a female horse? Either way, doesn't matter because they're talking about nightmares. So I'm having a nightmare of a time, but they'll say I'm having a mare of a time. I'm having a mare. <laughs> I think that one's from um, home countries. Um, and my last one is grim. Because I hadn't heard that anywhere. It's like, oh, it's a bit grim. It's like a bit gross. It's like, no, thank you. Like if you sometimes you'll order like a burger and it's like, you know, maybe just got just meat on it and nothing else, and you know, it looks a bit grim, it's like not very appetizing. Yeah, it's so grim. That one took me a long time to figure out. So there you have it. That is my top, I don't even know how many I did. You can count them and tell me how many of my favorite words. I just wanted to make a list of everything, all my favorite slang in the UK that I've been exposed to. Tell me in the comments below your favorite slang. I'm sure there are so many. Last time when I did my insults video, you gave me some real good ones. A corker of one, there's an Australian <laughs> um, slang for you. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up and you can hit that bell if you don't want to miss any videos and hit subscribe so I can see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.